Chapter 1. Family Separation is the Worst Trauma of Deportation When Donald Trump was about to become president in 2016, all immigrants began to feel utterly uncertain about their future. He was talking about the wall between Mexico and America, deportations, and anti-immigrant policies. The author of this book, Carla Villavicencio, was only 21 years old when she first realized that she might have no future in America. A gifted girl with good prospects ceased feeling confident about any ambitions and thought of writing a book. When Trump announced his plans on undocumented Americans many years later, she started writing it to tell the stories of immigrant people such as Juan and Joaquin. Julian had to traverse the desert four times to reach the border and meet with his kids. He hired people to help him cross the border because it was dangerous due to the extreme temperatures in the desert. He even met individuals who these border helpers abandoned in the desert since the latter couldn't perform their job sober. It was too perilous. Some of these individuals couldn't survive the crossing. Due to family separations that often happen because one of the spouses lives across the border, immigrants aim to build new families. Dreaming about a new family, Julian wanted to give birth to a baby girl who could speak both English and Spanish. He dreamed of taking this child to the cinema and was ready to try to understand the jokes in the cartoons and how he would visit all her school conferences and speak English without her help. Joaquin also crossed the border four times but had to meet the narcos, terrible guys who maintain drug trafficking, to do so. Narcos take the immigrants through wild nature straight to the destination, but it isn't easy because they have to climb a mountain carrying a huge backpack. Unfortunately, Joaquin's backpack was torn in the climb, and he realized that he couldn't go further because he lost his water and food as a result. He was so exhausted that he said he was done, the equivalent of admitting that you want to die. Thankfully, two young men helped him climb to the top. People of any race have the same longings. They want to have a family, feel that they belong, and find a proper job. The undocumented Americans will help you understand how immigrants feel about living in the U.S. You will realize which challenges they have to overcome and what motivation they have. You will learn what they are going through to survive in a foreign country and what makes them the same as any American. Chapter 2. Immigrants Helped to Mitigate the Effects of 9-11 Many immigrants enter therapy groups and Medicaid in order to cope with mental disorders and panic attacks. People often feel embarrassed talking about such things because it is inherent in the community that any sickness is perceived as a deficiency. Villa Vicencio attended some group therapy sessions and reassured them that they didn't have to be ashamed of talking about their traumas in front of her. One of the therapy members, Milton, survived the 9-11 tragedy. He felt so broken that his psychologist had to dissuade him from overdosing. Milton reminded Villa Vicencio of her father, and she recalled how she spent her time with him at the zoo. This visit made her think that people and animals were all the same. So, to help Milton feel better, she invited him to visit the zoo. While walking near the glass panels, she saw their reflections and wondered whether people would think that they were father and daughter. Does God allow death for a reason? Carla Carnejo Villavicencio Rafael, Milton's friend, was a firefighter who helped put out a fire during the 9-11 tragedy. They met while volunteering to help with the consequences. Rafael saved a pregnant woman by taking her from the 28th floor of the North Tower. His lungs were irreversibly damaged from all the dust and smoke. When Raphael died, ten years later, Milton wrote a book in honor of his friend. According to Villa Vicencio, after the catastrophe, it didn't matter whether a person lost someone there or was far from that place. As long as one was white, it meant that 9-11 traumatized them personally. Everybody became suspicious of immigrants. The events of 9-11 completely altered the image of immigration. People became paranoid, and the waves of hate overwhelmed immigrants. 
9-11 was not only a catastrophe in terms of terrorists' cruelty, it also became a crash of many Americans' morality. Since all immigrants became suspects, the government didn't allow the undocumented ones to have a driving license anymore. Villa Vincentio's father was one who lost his job. He broke down in front of his daughter because now he had no way to earn money to support his family. Villa Vicencio was challenged by such emotions because her father usually was an unshakable man. 9-11 harmed not only those immigrants who volunteered to help deal with the consequences, but also those who weren't directly connected with the catastrophe. Chapter 3. Children of undocumented parents can develop severe psychological disorders. Her parents had to leave her in Ecuador to make money abroad, so Villa Vicencio spent much of her childhood without her parents. She feels sad when she has to leave her dog and boyfriend for just a couple of days, so she couldn't imagine how her parents managed to leave her for five years. Visits to psychologists were all about the same. They told her this abandonment affected her and resulted in attachment issues, which she denied and stopped her therapy. She believed the reason for her attachment problem was that she was an undocumented person who could be deported at any time. I didn't allow myself to feel joy because I was scared to attach myself to anything I'd have to let go of. Carla Cornejo Villavicencio Villavicencio was diagnosed with obsessive-compulsive disorder, depression, and borderline personality disorder at a young age. The stress from being away from her parents at such a young age caused neurological changes that led to psychological disorders. She thought about all the kids that were separated from their parents and questioned how any of them could get help. In 2017, she visited Miami and met with Julieta, an immigrant from Nicaragua. Julieta showed her a specific place where immigrants could take care of their health, as often they don't have insurance and money to pay for doctor appointments or medication. Julieta told her of specific pharmacies that provide immigrants with such medicines, but not for serious diseases and for reasonable prices. However, they cannot ask pharmacists any questions, so no consultations are allowed. Julieta walked into the pharmacy with Villa Vicencio and helped her purchase painkillers. She said that because of Villa Vicencio's accent, they wouldn't have sold her anything, so Julieta accepted help from insured people. For example, one of her neighbors pretends she has migraines, and her doctor prescribes appropriate pills, which she then provides to Julieta. Immigrants may even have clandestine doctors who cannot practice in America. One of them is a dentist who makes good cavity fillings. Some people think that alternative medicine, with all the herbal teas for different diseases and love potions, has something magic in it. But Villa Vicencio thinks that it can be used. For example, she believes if a person gets a placebo and it cures some minor disease, it's fine. There is no harm in drinking herbal teas from time to time for people who have money for real medicine. They can afford to cure serious diseases in a medical institution, unlike immigrants who don't have such an option. There is no choice for immigrants but to visit clandestine pharmacies and doctors to get medications. Chapter 4 how Environmental Issues and Government Neglect Affect Immigrants' Health Villa Vicencio visited Flint, Michigan, where water quality became extremely deteriorated, but authorities didn't take any action. The water was brown and tasted like rust. There was no clean water for a very long time, and even General Motors ceased using Flint's water because they were worried it would spoil their metal components. Although the majority of the citizens left Flint and complained, the government still did not react. Blood testing revealed a high level of lead, a heavy metal that can damage one's organs. People had to use bottled water for everything, even showering. Children couldn't take hot baths because lead could get inside their bodies through their pores expanded from heat. One woman, whom Villa Vicencio asked about living in Flint, told her that she was diagnosed with cancer. It isn't known whether the lead or something else influenced her health, but when the doctor told her that she should get proper treatment in Mexico because she wouldn't be able to pay for chemotherapy in America, she refused to leave the country. 
an American doctor agreed to cure her at a lower cost. Theodoro was an immigrant who worked in a Detroit sweets factory for 10 years. He was enthusiastic about being a sweets man, not only because of the delicious smell of chocolate, but also because of the technology. He liked observing how the robots covered the sweets with chocolate and put them into a cooling machine. Besides, the owners of the factory treated him well. In 2012, they sold the factory to a man who would only tolerate American citizens at the workplace. The previous owners gave him a perfect letter of recommendation to encourage other employers to give him the job he deserved. Theodoro moved to Flint and faced the water problem as well. He had two dogs and could not give them the water with lead or drink it himself. As an undocumented person, he wasn't allowed to get free bottled water, and he rarely found a government worker who would provide him with safe water. Despite numerous rumors that all immigrants cause only harm, the reality shows that most of them are hardworking people who just want a better life. Chapter 5. The Burden of Growing Up Without a Father Javier, an immigrant father of four children, three boys and a girl, was deported, leaving his spouse, Patricia, and his kids, who were frequently unsupervised. Villa Vicencio saw a video of them saying goodbye to their father at the airport and decided to visit and support the family. Javier admitted that he hoped to the very last moment that something would change and he wouldn't be deported. After such an abrupt separation from his family, he had psychological trauma. A family lawyer now plays the role model of the father when he comes to visit Javier's family, who are always eager to see him. He takes them and Villa Vicencio to lunch. The children miss their father terribly. They cannot sleep at night, and Javier's daughter even stopped eating when her father was deported. Javier often fights with his wife, Patricia, about sending the kids to Mexico. Even though they would have a father, they wouldn't have the normal future Patricia wants for them. In America, they would have a proper education, but in Mexico, they would work on a coffee plantation. Unfortunately, the family will be in even more trouble when winter arrives as they don't own a car, and one of the kids usually visits a local library to do homework on the computer. Since they live in a rural area, it will be dangerous to walk many miles away from home to the library. Villa Vicencio organized fundraising to buy a laptop and internet access for the boy. She encouraged them to study hard and strive for a better future. The kids just want to be somebody. Many immigrants find sanctuary in religious institutions. Officers usually cannot deport them from sanctuaries because churches don't hide immigrants there. They report about every case. Villa Vicencio visits such a man in the church. She is torn apart by the thought that she cannot help someone who seems to morally die in this sanctuary. She tries not to bring him news about the outside world so as not to aggravate his loneliness in the church. He cannot even cry about his situation because people in the church aren't sympathetic enough to comfort him. Religion for immigrants can provide salvation but not moral support. Chapter 6 the Challenges of Being an Aging Immigrant When Villa Vicencio's father was suspected of having prostate cancer, he refused doctor's advice to get tested because he wanted to die. Villa Vicencio was furious because her father didn't have any insurance and money to pay for treatment. At some point, children of immigrant parents switch their roles and parents become children. For one thing, most available jobs for undocumented immigrants are jobs Americans will not do, which takes healthy young migrants and makes them age terribly. Carla Cornejo Villavicencio Immigrants who grow older do not have any prospects in America. They don't own housing, have no insurance or savings. Villavicencio's father took a job in a restaurant where the owners paid him almost nothing. He had to work long hours and clean everything in the kitchen, which was too hard for an aging man. In fact, it would be challenging even for a young person. He had to quit and couldn't find another job. It is a blessing for aging immigrants if they have caring children. Octavio was a Guatemalan immigrant whose employer didn't pay him for work. He said that Americans express more respect toward their pets than immigrants. 
Villa Vicencio visited him and gave him an envelope with $400. She didn't know how to behave around this man and invited Octavio to lunch. He says that younger immigrants frequently bully aging ones by asking them to leave their jobs because they are too old. A study conducted by Harvard academic Roberto Gonzalez on the psychological state of young immigrants has shown that instability causes frequent pains, let alone sleeping and eating disorders. Immigrants who exhaust themselves during work are sacrificing themselves for their children. They want to pay for their education and comfortable lives. Immigrants are devoted fathers and mothers who don't want their kids to languish in their native countries without any chance to be happy. Even though they are usually unhappy in the U.S., they have more possibilities abroad than in their homelands. Mercedes is an aging immigrant who is eager not to allow herself to become powerless in a foreign country. She invited Villa Vicencio for dinner, which she wanted to cook, but Mercedes didn't allow her to cook. Villa Vicencio wasn't a good cook because her mother never taught her how to prepare meals, so she never became a housewife. Her mother thought that if Villa Vicencio didn't succeed in household matters, she would become more independent and have a good job. Now she has become pretty clumsy in the kitchen, and nobody wants her to hurt herself and spoil the food. Conclusion Carla Villavicencio described all the pain that immigrants feel while attempting to improve their lives in America. They don't return to their home countries because life there is worse. They want their children to be educated, have prospective professions, learn English, and live in a civilized country where they won't have to work on plantations. Deportation is very painful because a deported person loses family, misses them, feels separation anxiety, and doesn't know how to get their life back. Children of the deported fathers and mothers suffer severe psychological traumas. Their mental health is damaged at an early age, which can be treated only by medications. But how can they get medications if they don't have insurance? People use clandestine pharmacies to improve their health, but sometimes it is not enough. If an immigrant has cancer, they cannot treat it in America because it is too expensive. Lucky are those who can find doctors who provide treatment for low costs. Even though immigrants usually work harder than others for small amounts of money, some employers may not pay. If you are an aging, undocumented person, life will be even more challenging for you. You cannot do the work usually taken by immigrants because it is extremely physically demanding and nobody wants to hire you. But immigrants usually don't feel regret about their time spent in America. They are proud that their kids are learning English and getting diplomas, feel freedom after the possibility of deportation, and enjoy a shower after crossing the hot desert in Mexico. They want a better life for their kids. That's why they immigrate despite all the suffering they endure in America. Try this. Read stories of undocumented people and look at them from a different perspective. Volunteer if you can. You may provide them with food, clothes, or some money. These people will be grateful for any help. Treat them as equals. Everybody deserves to be respected. They are people who need love, kindness, and support.